Good morning. I'm giving this presentation on behalf of Henrik Sten Andersen, who is leading the Copernicus in situ coordination activity. Um, so we will now have our fingers back in the cold water, not flying so high anymore. There are challenges in, uh, involved with uh, in situ data. We have to define real requirements for what data we need for the different activities. So we have to address issues like resolution in observation, time and space, data quality, timeliness, and so on. We also need to address the exchange of data, make them available, and their data policy is an issue, of course, but they are also an issue of having good data management systems around uh, among the data providers. And finally, sustainability of an observation system is an important issue. Siemens has from the very beginning, and here I mean back to the days of Merci and My Ocean and so on, included in situ data by establishing the in situ uh, TAC, which is a strong activity which we, of course, must continue to develop. Siemens has also been helpful in addressing requirements. Antonio mentioned the meeting that took place a year ago where uh, requirements for Siemens was addressed. And that has led to observation and, and uh, having deep argo flows, for instance, biogeochemical observations and so on. And finally, again, sustainability. It's important that Siemens, together with EEA, Eurogoose, and other organizations, uh, work together in promoting the importance of in situ observations towards national and international organizations. I will now give a short overview of the in situ coordination activity, which is delegated to EEA. But EEA has uh, launched a, a tender for that, so you, Metnet, and Eurogoose are contractors in helping addressing these issues. There's a lot of activities that are uh, being done within this uh, coordination activity. Uh, we call them thematic projects. And I will give you a short overview of the ones that is important for the marine community. So the one big activity is to establish a database on requirements and the philosophy here is that it, the starting point is the uh, products of the uh, Copernicus services. So if we take all the products that CMEMS have, there, there's a need for in situ data for, for at least some of the products. So which data are needed? What shall the requirements for these data be? and then link to the data availability. So we are trying to build this database. This work has been going on for one and a half year now. And actually right now we are preparing a synthesis report that should be ready by the end of this month. And the one I'm responsible for is for the marine data. And the intention is that when the report is ready, it will be sent to the Siemens community for comments. So I really hope that you will give us the good feedback so we can improve the information that we have in this database. Just to give you an example of the requirements for some of the essential ocean variables that is used within CMEMS, this is a gridded format, meaning that we have a horizontal and vertical resolution in grids. You can always debate whether this is a good way to do it or not. Uh, but it's a starting point to the, have that discussion. And if it's agreed to ha that it's a way forward, we, of course, need to, to improve that because for the time being, the horizontal resolution or the spatial resolution is the same for all regional seas, which is, of course, not necessarily the truth. 
and maybe also there are areas within the seas that needs higher resolution. But that's the next step of the discussion that we hope to initiate by this. When you have defined the requirements and you compare it with what data or observations that exist, you are able to make a gap analysis. We have decided to split the gaps up into four categories. The first one is the obvious one. Observations are not done, so it's a gap. You can address that. The other one is observations are done, but the data are not shared. They are hidden somewhere, maybe not in, in, a, in a proper database, but there might also be the issue of either national or institutional data policies preventing a free exchange. So that is something that we have to address as well. Then there are sustainability gaps. I will return to that later on. And finally, there can be some technological gaps, meaning that we don't have the technology yet to do the observation we want to do. <clears throat> Last year, we have a pro had a project where we try to map the sustainability of the observation systems. And uh, the report was launched late last year and is available on, on the web page. Let me show you some of the results from, from the marine community. So the first one is the, um, the funding source. And you can see that Nearly 50% of the observations are funded by a combination of institutional funds and research funds. Only a little less than 30% is funded by institutional funds alone, meaning it's a part of an of a institutional annual budget. And nearly as much is, is uh, pure research-funded <coughs> observations. If we go to sustainability, you can see that, that we have divided up in, in different groups. So the, the first one um, shows that uh, observations are funded now, but problems are foreseen within a couple of years. And only 28% are funded now and no problems are foreseen. And then we have others where, where there are no funding today and, and are not foreseen, and, but, and some where there are no funding today, but there is a hope within a couple of years. The same exercise was done for meteorology and atmospheric composition, so this table shows the, the uh, results from these three categories. And if you compare the ocean part with the meteorological part, you, you can see that a major part of meteorological observations are funded by institutional funding. National meteorological institutes have their basic funding, they do observations on. They have international obligations and so on. So we know that more or less, but now we, have, we can demonstrate it by having these numbers. And the same goes for the sustainability that the sustainability of meteorological observations are much higher than for the marine part. So in the marine community, we really have a task of promoting the issue of having sustainable observations. Then there's a relatively new thematic project focusing on hydrology. So the fresh water inflow, and of course that is, is of interest for several of the Copernicus services, also the marine one, uh, where there's interest to have the inflow of fresh water from land and, what, and the substances that it carries with it. So there's a group set up to address these issues, and we'll also, all the projects that we have in, in Copernicus in situ uh, observation coordination group, we have to prepare a status report by the end of May, so also this uh, group will, will report and, and that will be available for, for comments, of course. Yesterday we touched upon the issue of the lack of data in the Arctic 
there's a, and uh, we have established early this year a thematic project addressing this issue. So the intention is to, to get an overview of the need for data for the Copernicus services, but also for the satellite missions that need data for calibration and validation of their observations. So the idea is to prepare a report <coughs> where we address requirements from all the Copernicus services, give an overview of what data is a, that exist, those who are freely available, and as far as po possible, also those who are hidden somewhere, not available, not freely available, and uh, then finally to have a gap analysis trying to give an overview of what data is needed in the Arctic region. It's important also to have data from outside Europe. So uh, in this uh, Copernicus in situ coordination, there's uh, two activities going on. One addressing or giving a, or try to establish cooperation with WMO on, on meteorological data, but the same activity is also towards IOC. Uh, so we have started this IOC engagement activity, but it's put a little bit on standby for the time being because uh, EEA wants to close the WMO agreement before start continuing with the IOC because having the agreement will involve DG Grow and it's a, it's a matter of doing it in the right way. But it's not forgotten, so we will take it up later on. There's a lot of information material produced as well. We have newsletters, fact sheets, the reports that we are producing in the various thematic activities. All is available on the web page that you can see it, that is listed below here. And finally, we, have, uh, we are about to start a project um, on uh, reanalysis of uh, old drifter data. It's just been decided a few days ago, so I don't know much about it, but it's an activity that will be going on or start uh, within a few weeks. And then I think that is my... Okay, fine. So much the better. It, it, it involves the Frimaire and Meteo France and CLS, I think, and Humanet. <laughs>